a force problem. So first step, good free body diagram. And so let's uh, make use of this diagram that we have on the side. We'll turn it into a good free body diagram. Uh, we already have our 12 newtons shown. We know that there's going to be a weight of the brick. Um, we also know that there's a normal force because we're against that wall and the normal force is going to be perpendicular to that wall surface there. And, uh, and then what else? We do have a friction force. And the friction force is a bit vague. In other words, we don't know whether the friction force is going upwards or downwards. Um, and if we stop and think about it, uh, if the brick was light enough, we may find that our 12 Newton force is more than enough to hold up that brick and it's pending. It's just about to slip upwards, but the friction force is down, kind of holding it in place. On the other hand, if the brick was really heavy, we may find that the 12 Newton force wasn't quite enough to keep it held up and the friction force is keeping it from slipping down. And in that case, the friction force would be up. So not knowing which way it goes, we, we're going to have to do a little thinking before we can put that together. But what we do know is that the brick is held still, held in place there. No acceleration at all going on there. So we do know that we can start off with the knowledge that F net is equal to, let's call our 12 newtons, the applied force here. Uh, a vector and then we have our fg going down we have so basically all of our forces acting on it and that's why it's so nice to have a good free body diagram we can just refer to that and then lastly we have the friction force so let's talk about each of these well the applied force we know the direction of that and that's uh, 35 degrees off the wall there no problem fg straight down of course um, Fn is horizontal, uh, perpendicular to the surface again, and the friction force, as we discussed, we have no idea yet. All right, so um, we're going to have to crunch a little bit of numbers to before we can actually put together um, a vector addition diagram because we don't really know how that friction force is going to fit in there. So let's get started with that. So uh, for part A, um, our weight of that brick, just being mg, would be, uh, we're told, 0 0.5 kilograms and 9.8 meters per second squared. And we calculate that 4.9 newtons, and we know that that would be downwards. Okay, so that's good. So um, if we were to start sketching out our vector addition diagram, we could say there's our 12 Newtons. And uh, then our FG is going to be there. Um, now, does the FG go to the very bottom of that 12 Newton? In other words, does it pass this point? Or is it less than that? Is it greater than that? That tells us something about the friction. So before we can go further, maybe we should determine uh, what's the vertical component of that 12 Newton applied force. That will tell us how, you know, whether we make this shorter or longer, this FG. So let's, let's go ahead with that. Um, the FA, and we'll call it FAY, the vertical component of FA, um, and just a little bit of trig, is going to be 12 Newtons cos, 35 and uh, calculate that 9.8 newtons and uh, that's in an upwards direction because we're talking about the vertical component of that FAY and it's to the upper right. So as we can see the FAY is a lot bigger than the FG and so that means our FG it only goes down about halfway and so we can show this as our FG here. And we'll fill that in. Now, what does that tell us? Well, we know that the normal force is going to bring us back to the beginning because we know that the net force, as we pointed out, is zero. So that leaves us with our friction force to fill in that last gap. And so normal force here and the friction force must be down. 
All right. So that's what that tells us. And in this case, let's just think, does that make sense? Well, we're, uh, our brick is very light and we're pushing with 12 newtons. And what it, we see is that the 12 newtons provides a vertical component of 9.8, which is way more than what's needed to hold up the weight of the um, brick, which is only 4.9 newtons. So that means it would slip upwards if not for the friction force. So the friction force is definitely downwards, holding it in place. That makes sense. Okay, so if we were to go the last step here, we could say, therefore, the friction force must be, and we can say 4.9 newtons minus our 9.8 newtons. In other words, the component vertically there, and you can look at it as just some geometry there. Um, we can show our angle in there to kind of have a more complete diagram. Um, and so the result of that is 4.9 newtons and a negative, or we can just specify downwards. And so that's part A. Let's move on to part B and see if things are any different. Okay, so in part B, we've already established um, our FAY, and so um, our FG is the one that we're going to have to determine now. Again, MG, in this case, it's 1.5 kilograms and 9.8 meters per second squared. And in this case, we end up with 14.7 newtons, and of course, it's gravity, it's down. Okay, so now when we draw our vector addition, we're starting with our 12, as before. But this time, when we look, we know that the vertical component of that 12 was 9.8, and we're going down 14.7. So we're going well beyond the uh, bottom of that 12 there. So 14.7, or FG. All right, so we can mark in newtons to be more complete. Now the FN, as per the usual, and our frictional force has to finish our free body diagram and bring us back to zero because our F net is zero. So here's our frictional force. Now we can see that the frictional force goes upwards. And so basically, does this make sense? Well, now we have a much heavier brick. And so the vertical component that we're adding by our push is not enough to hold up this brick. In other words, the weight of the brick is 14.7 and our vertical component is only 9.8. So without friction, it would definitely be slipping down. We would not have enough force on it in order to hold it in place. And so, therefore, a frictional force going up makes total sense. It's avoiding the slippage down or countering the slippage down. So if we were to determine the frictional force in this case, what we could do is we could say the 14.7 newtons minus the 9.8 newtons. So again, just looking at our triangle, little geometry, and we would have 4.9 newtons but in this case, it would be upwards. And so there we go. There's our answer for A. There's our answer for B. And we're all done with that one.